You know, GOSCON 05 uh, looks so successful day one here that I'm sure there'll be an 06. And it just took a few months to plan this. And if you try to plan a conference in a few months, you learn some things. We initially said, well, it'll be a regional conference. We'll get a few regional folks together that believe in open source. And then we said, oh my gosh, we've got 17 states that have registered. And we have somebody from a group from Argentina. And we have Canada. And we said, well, our regional conference became national. Our national conference became international. There's a huge interest in what we're doing in open source, the entire community. And I want to thank every one of you for sort of testing uncharted waters. When you have a first ever government open source conference, you really don't know what to expect. You know, it's my, my honor this morning to introduce Congressman David Wu. He was sworn into a fourth term this year as a member of the U.S. Congress representing Oregon's first congressional district. In the U.S. House of Representatives, Congressman Wu serves on the Education and Workforce Committee, which has sole jurisdiction for educational policy. He also serves on the Science Committee and is the ranking member of Environment, Technology, and Standards Subcommittee. This committee has jurisdiction over research and technology policy, which is very near and dear to a lot of people in this room. We were elated when Congressman accepted our invitation to kick off the conference this morning. We did not want a room this morning filled with politicians. You probably noticed that. We wanted a politician. We wanted a prominent elected official who understands and supports open source, a public figure who appreciates the potential of open source being developed further in the public sector. Congressman Wu exceeded our expectations. Please join me in giving a very warm welcome to the Congressman. Thank you very much, Kurt. And, um, you know, I was going to leave this topic alone, but uh, um, I, I have to comment uh, that when you mentioned someone who uh, knows and understands open source, I was telling someone earlier I was very reluctant to come speak because <laughs> I know what I know, I know what I don't know, and even though I was an IP lawyer before going to Congress, uh, I still don't know, uh, I don't un understand open source very well. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what keeps these lights uh, 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 bright because I've never seen electricity myself. Uh, there, there are just a whole lot of things I know I don't understand very well, but I'm looking forward to learning more about it and uh, supporting your efforts. And I have to uh, also add that uh, I was told that this was going to be a local conference. It has ballooned into a national conference and an international conference. Uh, evidently, someone didn't tell y'all that when you have a conference for uh, public officials, you're supposed to have it in Monterey or San Diego or Miami. Uh, and to have a sellout crowd um, with our liquid sunshine in Portland, Oregon, uh, something must be going on here that uh, is, is, is drawing people uh, to what I think is uh, the, the greatest place on earth. And I thank you for inviting me to be with you all this morning. This is the first uh, conference of its kind to focus on the public sector and, uh, uh, and open source technology. And our, our intention is to provide public sector chief information officers, IT professionals, and others in government the chance to take part in the innovative solutions and strategies developed by research universities, private sector companies, and communities of developers that have made Oregon the hub of open source software. While much of the general public, uh, uh, like me a, a few weeks ago, uh, wrongly thinks of open source as the equivalent of uh, free software, we must recognize that open source represents a new paradigm for stimulating innovation. The innovative ideas coming out of the open source community here in Oregon and elsewhere represent the biggest trend in the IT industry since the development of the internet. Oregon is the hub for open source. Here we have some of the best minds, best businesses, and organizations gravitating together, whether it is uh, our host, uh, Portland State or Oregon State University and OSU's Open Source Lab the Open Source Development Labs, Beaverton's Open Technology Business Center, or major players like the Eclipse Foundation, IBM and Intel, and a host of other private companies and development communities with open source technology encompassing an entire technologic ecosystem, there are more opportunities than ever to increase efficiency, improve data security, 
enhance customer service, and save money. The Linux operating system alone has become a powerful part of the world economy, deployed across all continents and praised by governments and businesses worldwide. Ultimately, the development of open source technology will provide more options for public agencies and officials at the local, state, and federal level to better serve the citizens to which we all owe our obligations. For the development, from the development and application of the VA's internal electronic health information system to the use of Linux in servers by Oregon's DOT to the uh, recent adoption, uh, not uncontroversial, of an open source format to store documents by Massachusetts. The role of open source technology in government as well as in the private sector is growing and growing very, very rapidly. In the last several decades, the well-being of our economy and ourselves has been dependent on technologic advances in software, the internet, processing systems, and communications devices. As a member of the House Science Committee and the ranking member of its Environment, Technology, and Standards Subcommittee that oversees the National Institute of Technology and Standards, I have had on occasion to address difficult questions of computer security, the use of standards and the development of standards, the role of the internet in order to continue to provide responsible leadership and make sound policy decisions regarding technology Congress must be aware of and supportive of the open source technology sector and allow it to flourish on an equal basis uh, with other sectors this conference gives an unprecedented opportunity for those in government to interact and learn from leaders in the public and private sectors that are at the heart of open source innovation. I'm excited to be here today. I look forward to supporting the, the development of open source innovation here in Oregon and around the nation. And I congratulate you all for taking advantage of this uh, <coughs> exciting new technology. And welcome everyone to Oregon's first congressional district, the best one in Oregon or anywhere else. <laughs>